That's where the spirit of competition has come into the ministry. It didn't just start when you came into the church. You've been trying to outdo sister so-and-so. You've been trying to outdo brother so-and-so. You've been jockeying back and forth with each other, not realizing that the devil is using you because competition is not healthy. Competition always creates an enemy that knows you. The worst enemy is the enemy that was once your friend and now he becomes your adversary. He knows some things about you that other people don't know so he hits you in the places that hurt the most. You ever notice when you have internal struggles in your house and you begin to, to uh, get into a confrontation, they bring up something that's a low blow. Because at that time a spirit consumes them and they become your adversary or your opposing force. And they say something that make you feel worse than anything because they know things that you have shared with them. All right. A low blow. Look at your neighbor and say, protect yourself at all times. Because you said something that might have been true, but it pierced their hearts. It cut so bad that they wanted you to feel the same pain that they were feeling. So they punched you below the belt. Come on. All right. And talk about something. Uh, one of the things uh, that used to really get me is my weight. He said, look at that pot belly. And I said, oh, oh boy. That hurt it. But I have a responsibility to myself to do something about the things that do not please me. Right. He goes through his life living a lie, telling his father that he was his brother and he gets what belongs to his brother. Right. But now he no longer has a brother, he has an enemy. Okay. Right. Because he took what belonged to his brother. Now he has an enemy in his brother. What you gonna do? about the enemies you create. We always talking about brother so-and-so and them, they talk about me and they came up, they come against me, but sometimes you do things against your brothers and they wait for an opportunity to get you back. All right. It's all right when you're dishing it out, but you gotta make sure you take it. There's a law of reciprocity that says that whatsoever man soweth that also shall he reap. While you speak it in tongues, you need to know if you do me wrong, wrong will find you. All right. If you talk about me, you're going to be talked about. Okay. If you dog your pastor, whenever you make pastoral, somebody's going to dog you. Whatever you do to me, you're going to get it. Yeah. <clears throat> whatever you say about me, going to be said about you. Well, all right. If you disloyal to me, your parishioners will be disloyal to you. You're teaching good. Ain't nobody saying that. You're teaching good. You can't pray and God forgive me. And, and that does not work with the law of reciprocity. <laughs> Repentance does not remove that. All right. I know they don't teach you that in the church. Come on. You got to go through it. Okay. God, just forgive me for what I say. And he does forgive you. And that puts you what? That puts you in good standards with God. But you still need to know how to feel from the other side. Because he wants to make sure that you don't do that again. All right. <laughs> I'll work, John Stephen. Uh, I need you to understand something here. Let me see. He started in the womb. He started in the womb trying to pull his brother down. He grabbed his brother by the ankle, trying to pull him down so that he could come up first later. He he done some other underhanded stuff later in the field. His brother was hungry. Hungry. He had a, a, a natural desire to be fed. And naturally your brother would, would, would feed you. But 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 sometimes you manipulate people when people got something that you want. I know they don't talk about that in the church, but we will use people to get what we want. That's why I watch certain people, because I don't let them prostitute my anointing. I, I don't just let them use me. You think every, every preaching engagement I get, I say yes, no. Sometimes I say no. Because it's only the immature and those who have a mind of mindset that run after every preaching engagement. That's not the will of God. What's my purpose in this? 
I'm not trying to create a platform for myself. When God get ready for me, he said, my gift will make room for me. I ain't got to preach to you once I get in the circle with you how anointed I am, the preacher, uh, uh, being how great I'm a uh, master of oratory that I am, how I can speak prophetically, uh, the revelation that I have. I don't have to get into a contest with you to reveal who I am. You'll know me by my spirit. Well, all right. Too many people in the body of Christ making room for their gifts, and they'll never be in the forefront of ministry. They'll always be in the shadows. God said, I give you appointments, divine appointments. There's certain folks I will never preach for again, not because they didn't have the capacity to give me what I felt that I was worth, but because of the spirit that's up on the house. And if I cannot address the spirit, there's no need of me taking my ministry there because my ministry is a ministry to uproot and to bring forth deliverance, even in religious and tradition, traditional places. So I'm not going to be welcome everywhere. When I come in, I come in in more than an apostolic anointing. Many times I come in with a prophetic anointing. I begin to root up. Pull out, pluck up, and it begins to challenge some folks and, and it upsets some folks. But if God's going to lay the right foundation, that some stuff gonna have to be dug up, that some stuff gonna have to be done over, and somebody got to be bold enough and not worry about who don't like them and, and, and who's not gonna let them preach again. Let me show you something about God here. God will provide for you. He's Jehovah Child. He will provide for you if you're willing to be obedient unto Him. It's a cost behind all of this. We have to pay a great cost. Many people don't look at it. We have to pay for the bad choices that we have made in life. And now he's making payment plans on the choices that he made. And he don't like it because it seems like he can never pay it off. Because he's still feeling the hurt. He's still feeling this thing on the inside. And he said, even though my name, Jacob, my world well, feel right. My daddy blessed me by, by all uh, rights of the Hebrews. I am the blessed one, but I don't see a blessing. Let me tell you, blessing is not in how much money you got and how big your car is and, and your fancy clothes. Maybe you could be dressed up on the, in, on the outside and messed up on the inside. Now, he had it going on on the outside, but on the inside, he was frustrated, defeated, and disappointed. All right. He had it all. But he knew that the blessing just wasn't right. He got it, but it wasn't right. You ever obtained so I got the man, but it wasn't right. Because I took it from his wife. And I heard the kids. You ever think about how to get something? You messed up a child like who might have had a father in his life if you had not intervened, but because you wanted what you wanted. Selfishness. Did not look at what, what how you would affect others' lives. It was all about you. I'm going to just drive through the house now because I got my foot all the way on the gas. Yeah. There's some things that will be different in your life today if you consider how you affect others with your decision making. Right. Too many selfish folks that say they sanctify. Okay. When you really got this thing, you'll give anything you got. That's it. You give of yourself. You give of your substance. You give of your time. You give of anything because you realize it is he who has made thee and not thyself. Well. You're beginning to grasp it. So he's here, he's, he's cheated his brother out of his birthright again here. He's out there, I'm hungry, give me a little part. He said, uh, if you swear to give me your birthright, if you promise to sell me your birthright, he wants his birthright desperately. He don't want to be like it, he want to be here. It's not good enough for me to be equal to you. I want to be. I want your authority. I want your promises. I want everything that God will give you because you're not deserving. You ever found folks? I know they got folks like that in the church that look at you and they feel through the judgmental spirit that's upon you that you don't deserve what you have. 
They liked it more than us, and that's why they put the lead. That if all truth be told, they want what that person has. They underqualify you and overqualify themselves. Oh my 